I am in Riverton, Wyoming at the Wind River Heritage Center. Now this is actually a wax museum. It has a bunch of wax figures from an old museum, all sorts of taxidermy. This is a really old school place. I've really wanted to come here for a long time. So I'm very excited to come check this out. So it's here in a town pretty much in the middle of nowhere. It's in these two buildings. I do love old fashioned wax museums and taxidermy displays. This place has both and is definitely impressive. First, we're gonna take a look at the fantastic taxidermy display here. This was all caught, preserved, and displayed by a local trapper named Jake Carell, who started this museum. He started trapping in Wyoming at the age of seven, and he didn't stop until his death 92 years later. In fact, he had to quit school because of trapping skunks. He always smelled so bad that the teachers forced him out of an education. He did pass away in 2013, but his amazing work is still on display here. There's a wolf, a species that was endangered here in the state, but was successfully reintroduced in Yellowstone, as well as other areas. There's the grizzly bear. This is a cool display of some fish, along with some other critters. Like a turkey joined by various avians. There's a beaver building a dam for some baby beavers. And I like that some of these critters are doing people things. Why do people think this stuff is creepy? There's a moose. There's some highly vicious wolverines. That's a female and male elk. They like to congregate at the National Elk Refuge in Jackson Hole each winter. One of the most dangerous of the Wyoming beasts, the porcupine. There are some Rocky Mountain Bighorn Sheep. They have a large population in the Du Bois, Wyoming area, and they're also around here in the Wind River Mountains. That is one fierce bobcat waiting to murder something. Those are some black bears. He probably shouldn't be putting his nose in that wasp nest. That elk has some messed up antlers. That mountain lion is about to slay an elk. A peaceful frolicking antelope. There's some raccoons along with some skunks. This little chipmunk caught a fish. That's adorable. There's some more taxidermy mounts along the walls here. Along with all the taxidermy, there's a collection of skulls. Here's a collection of Native American artifacts found in the area. Quite a few arrowheads. Riverton is right by the Wind River Reservation, a home to the Shoshone and Arapaho. That's a Shoshone tan dress, originally from the Fort Hall Reservation. This skull is very intricately decorated. And here's a collection of old knives and assorted weapons. Some pioneer era artifacts. 
This is Corel's big collection of traps. This is an English man trap. It was hand forged in England, and these were used by English land barons until the 1850s. They were set up to trap illegal hunters on game reserves owned by the barons. Now entering the second building, home of the Wax Museum of Old Wyoming. This is a Wyoming themed wax museum, so all the figures have ties to the state. They were originally at a museum in Jackson, Wyoming. Then the museum moved to Thermopolis, Wyoming. That one closed in 2009, and then Jake Carell got a hold of the collection and brought them here. These are the figures of Meriwether Lewis, William Clark, and Sacagawea, also known as Sacagawea, the leaders of the Voyage of Discovery out west from 1804 to 1806. Sacagawea was a Shoshone and is buried at the Wind River Reservation nearby. I did make a video there if you're interested. There's a big bison being chased by a Native American, possibly off a big cliff of doom. This scene shows a rendezvous. Many of these took place here in Wyoming. They were often organized by the American Fur Trade Company. And in 1830, a wagon train had a rendezvous here along the Wind River in this area, and they trade lots of beaver and buffalo furs. This is the Wyoming Centennial Canoe, which was used on a voyage in 1990 along Wyoming rivers, as well as the waters of other surrounding states. Kit Carson is chilling by the canoe. He is one of the most famous Wild West fur trappers. He was also a wilderness guide for people like John C. Fremont, and was a respected Indian agent. This is General John C. Fremont. In 1842, he was ordered to map the Oregon Trail, and along with Kit Carson, he did explore the Wind River Range. He was also later the 1856 presidential candidate for president and a Civil War general. Here's Jim Bridger, another one of the most famous mountain men, who established Fort Bridger in 1834, one of the earliest permanent settlements in Wyoming. He spent over half a century exploring the West and served as a scout and military advisor. That's Thomas Fitzpatrick, who was a trapper, trailblazer, and Indian agent. He led the first two emigrant trains to the West Coast. Also, his thumb is missing. These figures are antiquated, which adds to the charm of the place, but still, I, I'm pretty sure he had all his fingers. This is Jedediah Smith, whose fur trading ventures led him to the discovery of the South Pass. He was also the first white American to reach California, and the first to cross the Sierra Nevada. This is Captain Benjamin Bonneville, who led the first wagon train across the South Pass, which is in central Wyoming, and he discovered an early oil spring, and this discovery of oil in Wyoming would later on create huge profits and a big industry. That is Father Pierre de Smet, a Catholic missionary who spent much time in this region of the West, preaching to the Native Americans. He converted many, and also tended to the spiritual needs of the mountain men and early pioneers. This is a typical mountain man. The company traders were always clean shaven, contrary to popular belief, because the natives didn't like beards. And they roughed out the wilderness here collecting furs and living off the land. This guy has some rattlesnake rattlers stitched in his jacket. That's pretty awesome. There's a Shoshone woman decorating a bison hide. This is a beaver plue press. The mountain men would build these, take 60 beaver hides and fold them in half with their hairs in to protect their furs. This is Chief Washaki. Despite his role with the Treaty of Fort Laramie and other diplomatic relations, his original placard just emphasizes that he once fought the Crow Chief in order to stop a larger war. They fought in hand-to-hand -hand combat and he did win by supposedly cutting out his heart and eating it. This is a scene depicting the Treaty of Fort Laramie signing. 
The figures are Red Cloud, Crazy Horse, and Sitting Bull. The treaty allowed for the natives to hunt and fish throughout their Wyoming territory and bound the United States to protect the natives against attacks and depredations by whites. This treaty was very much broken, by the way. There's a full-length Shoshone war bonnet. There's some more Native American wax figures. There's some Native American figures hidden back there. Can't really make them out, and I'm not exactly sure what they're doing. But there's a freaking jackalope. A jackalope in an old school wax museum. I love this place. That's Brigham Young leading some Mormon handcar pioneers to Wyoming. In 1847, the LDS Church planned a group migration to Wyoming. Young and the leadership handpicked certain people to go west by handcart and find homes and settle, building way stations along the way. And these earliest pioneers to Wyoming trailblazed the Mormon Trail, which led to the eventual permanent settlements at Salt Lake City. This depicts the lynching of cattle Kate and Jim Avril. Avril was a Yale graduate who came out to Rollins, Wyoming, where he met Kate. Avril didn't really like to work, so they started a hog ranch. And her fee of an unbranded calf caused a wave of calf stealing in the area. And because of that, they accumulated so much stock that they started purchasing lots of ranch land and filed for a homestead. The people around Rollins were so pissed off that a vigilante group formed, and in 1889, they hang cattle Kate and Avril in a goalie with wood from a cabin. Kate was the first woman hanged in Wyoming. Here's Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid in a jail cell. Butch led one of the most daring gangs of the Wild West. Both Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid robbed a lot of banks and trains here in Wyoming. In fact, Butch got his name for being a butcher in Rock Springs, Wyoming. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid did eventually leave the American West for South America. To find out what happened, watch the movie. This is Lieutenant Casper W. Collins. He was dispatched with 25 men to protect a wagon train under attack by natives near Casper. En route, they were surprise attacked by over 2,000 natives and they got massacred. Collins' body was reported being horribly mutilated. He was scalped and had his eyes punched out. Speaking of getting overrun, here's General George Armstrong Custer, who was killed along with the entire 7th Cavalry Regiment at the romanticized Battle of Little Bighorn. Custer was quite the interesting character also. This is the West's greatest showman, Buffalo Bill Cody. He formed the wildly popular Buffalo Bill's Wild West Show and built up the town of Cody, Wyoming. That guy on the ground is yellow hair. He was murdered by Buffalo Bill before the show and everything, simply because he was present at the Battle of Little Bighorn. Wyoming was the first territory or state to grant suffrage to women back in 1869. This is Esther Hobart Morris, the leader of the sometimes militant effort for the Women's Suffrage Bill in 1869, and she was the first woman commissioned as Justice of the Peace in 1870. That's Nellie Taylor Ross, the first female governor in the nation elected in 1924. This is probably my favorite scene here. This is the autopsy of Big Nose George Parrott. Big Nose George was a murderer and bandit who escaped prison once, but in a second attempted escape at the prison in Rollins, he was captured and hanged by other prisoners. Dr. John Osborne here was a Union Pacific physician who dismembered and skinned the body of Big Nose George. He turned his skin into a medicine bag and a pair of shoes. Osborne was later elected the governor of Wyoming and wore Big Nose George at his inauguration. But that's not all. If you look closely at the wax head under the sheets, that's supposed to be Big Nose George, that's actually Richard Nixon. That's one of the original placards from the old wax museum. And here's good old President Theodore Roosevelt. And one of his favorite spots he ever visited was Yellowstone National Park here in Wyoming. Here's Thomas Edison. He went on a fishing trip near Rollins in 1878. He was using a bamboo fishing pole, and that gave him the idea to use a bamboo filament for the incandescent lamp that was being worked on back at Menlo Park that ended up being successful. And also Cheyenne was one of the first cities in the country to have electric lights. 
That's Charles M. Russell, one of my favorite Western artists, but from my understanding he mostly worked in Montana. The old placard states that the entire West claims him, so that's the justification for him being in the Wyoming Hall of Fame here. In a case in the back corner there's this bent and beat up rifle, obviously it has a story that I have no clue about. So it's an amazing old school wax museum, and I'm so glad it's still here and you can visit it intact. Out on the back of the Wind River Heritage Center, there's an 1886 new Racine grain and bean threshing machine, and a big old cart. This is an old homestead cabin, built in 1908 near Riverton by H.L. Givens. Most early settlers like him raised hay, feed corn, oats, barley, beans, or sugar beets, and they probably used horse-drawn equipment. This is the inside of a trapper line shack, used temporarily by trappers to have shelter on their trap line. And here's an outhouse. They have a lot of old agricultural equipment, which is cool and all, but I don't really know anything about any of it. There's a bunny chilling under that thing. So this place is definitely worth a stop if you're out here. Please check out my other videos and thanks for watching.